both ways, right? We can't complain constantly that they aren't spending any money, that they aren't making the team any better, and then say, well, you know, it didn't have to be like this. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Aroldis Chapman. Of all people, is a pirate. Yeah, I know, right? One year, ten point five million as a free agent, coming off his best season since twenty seventeen, and it was a really good season for your World Series champion Rangers, at least after being acquired from the Royals. Average ninety nine point six mile an hour fastball. That's his highest such rate since twenty seventeen. 103 strikeouts, the most he's had in a season since 2015. 58.1 innings, most in a season since 2015. He was consistent. He was durable. He was dynamic. He was not a rolled as Chapman from seven, eight, ten years ago when he was setting the sport on fire with a regular 105, 106 mile an hour fastball when pitching for the Reds. But he was still really, really good. Now, now, can he do that again at age 36? I don't know. I don't know. Nobody can know that. So maybe the better question here is, even if he does, what difference does he make to the 2024 Pirates? Well, the obvious is that they're now going to have a superb back of the bullpen, a breathtaking back of the bullpen. And unlike a lot of what you might have seen, heard, and read last night with this announcement, particularly from the national types who said, now you're going to have Chapman and David Bednar in the back end. I also happen to know that Colin Holderman exists. And Holderman, when he's on, has been just as good and is just as durable and dynamic and everything else. Only he's coming from the other side. This is wipe out stuff. This is STFD stuff, to paraphrase A.J. Burnett. This is, depending on the game and situation and where you are in terms of uh, availability, this is 7, 8, 9, the end. It shortens the game, especially if you add into it that the Pirates also have a couple other good relievers as well. I'm going to throw in, even though I'm going to get nothing but a bunch of shrugs in response, Ryan Barucki, the veteran lefty who became quietly very good for the Pirates over the 2023 season. They've got guys who can get outs. They've got multiple guys who can get saves. They've got multiple guys who can pitch in fireman roles. I'm not sure that's where I'd want Chapman. He has, after all, spent most of his career coming into clean innings. But I wouldn't rule it out if I were Derek Shelton. And on top of all that, look, just in the intangible sense, they did something. You know, they went out and spent some money and they got themselves a baseball player, a very good baseball player at that. And they got him on a one year, which would seem to suggest that they just might take the coming season more seriously than a lot of us think. Would you rather have seen $10.5 million go into a starter, even a mediocre or a number four or five starter? Yeah, probably, but nothing precludes that. As I've been pointing out again and again and again, when you're looking at their current payroll, there's still a lot of room. Between where they are, which is now around the 70 million mark, and where they ought to be, which I think is at 100 million, but even if it's at 90 or so, it would be an upgrade. And it could be a significant upgrade. There are needs that this team still has. And that includes position players. I'm not wild about what's at first base. I'm not wild about what's at second base. I understand that there are some players who are either signed or assigned to competitions for those jobs. None of them excite me. And until I can name everybody who's vying for the right field competition, hint, I can't, I'm not that interested in who's out there either. 
But really what we're talking about here, still, all this time, and this doesn't change that, is the rotation. You've got Mitch Keller. Then you've got guys who might be somewhere in the middle or to the back end in Marco Gonzalez, in Martin Perez. You've got, at some point in the season, I think you have to see Paul Skeens in 2023, somewhere along the way. And then you've got those three guys that I've been mentioning on pretty much every episode. Ruanzi Contreras, Luis Ortiz, Quinn Priester. One of them. One of them absolutely must come through. Not just for the Pirates to compete, but I think in order for Oscar Marine to keep his job. So while this is... This is, you know, it's positive. I'm, I'm not sitting here downplaying it. I'm not dumping on Chapman for his age. And I'd never be one to shrug off an additional arm on the back end that can get you outs. There's nothing that managers and players alike love more than six-inning ball. And in modern baseball, six innings is, is pretty much cause for a parade for a starter. But even that, even that isn't in place right now. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone and... You do the rest. It's a ton of fun. It's a great meal. And it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door. Your car. Your bike. Your computer. Your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. J1Q comes from Matt, who says DK is the oldest Chapman one-year signing, not an admission, again, of signing a guy to hopefully acquire a return come trade season. That's the only way I see this headed. He either provides a return or he walks at the end of the year, in which case, what was the point? Matt, precedent is on your side. If you're expecting me to give you something different than what you just put forth, you're going to be disappointed. You can run right down the list. Tyler Anderson, Jose Quintana, Rich Hill, Carlos Santana. Just keep right on going. Any of these guys that they've brought in, any and all, with one exception, that's Andrew McCutcheon, of course, and it's a very different circumstance. They've all gotten sent out. So you bring the guy in. You say, hey, we're going to try. We're going to try really, really hard for four months and see where this goes. It doesn't go somewhere. And that player is gone at the end of July. So in that sense, where a lot of people have their eyebrows raised over Chapman getting $10.5 million, where last year he got $7 million less than that, have to understand that if the Pirates want to move Chapman at the deadline, there's going to be a bunch of teams that will be all too happy to take him off their hands, at which point two months of his contract get paid by somebody else. Does that sound overly cynical? Sure, I'd love for it not to be, but I'd also love to have something to base that on, something concrete, something that's already occurred. And I don't have that yet under this management. Maybe, maybe it'll be the case. I'm open-minded. Maybe it'll be the case that they do go ahead and get themselves at least one other impact starting pitcher. I think it has to be someone who fits in in a number two spot. In a Pittsburgh number two spot, it doesn't have to be in the Dodgers number two, but somebody who can slot in safely and smartly behind Mitch Keller. Do that. Show that you've got anything resembling 
pitching acumen among your instructors and get something out of these three pitchers that I keep mentioning in every episode, and maybe you'll have something. Maybe it'll be a little bit real. Heck, maybe they'll start out 20 and 8 and have everybody, myself included, going over the top. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 